At the beginning of the game, all of the pieces start on the same squares. But it's your job to make your pieces good and avoid having bad pieces. A good piece is active and has a purpose, where it controls important squares and has plenty of space available to move. Good pieces often control enemy squares. The more of those squares, the better. A bad piece is the opposite. It's passive, has very little mobility, and controls little to no opponent squares. Let's take a look at some examples of good versus bad pieces. In this position, White has a good rook on d1, controlling the only open file on the board. Black's rook, on the other hand, is passive on e8, only controlling space on Black's side of the board, without any clear targets. White makes the good rook even better by playing rook to d7, taking over the 7th rank and threatening to win the c7 pawn. Black's rook becomes extremely passive after rook to c8. This is a classic case of good piece versus bad piece. White has pressure on c7, which ties down Black's rook to passive defense. Notice White's rook also has pressure on g7, so Black's king cannot help the rook on the queen side without losing the kingside pawns. Black is helpless, and White has the very simple plan of bringing the king to b7, capturing the a7 pawn, and then promoting the a6 pawn into a queen. Let's take a look at another position together. In this position, Black decides to attack the bishop on c4 with knight to a5. Although this threatens to capture White's bishop and double White's pawns on the c file, White can simply play bishop to a2. Retreating the bishop to safety, where it is still a good piece. The bishop controls squares on the a2 to g8 diagonal, and the bishop can also move to the b1 to h7 diagonal, where it will be pointing directly at Black's king once the d3 pawn moves out of the way. Notice after Black's knight left c6, where it was a good piece controlling key central squares, it is now on the edge of the board and is a bad piece. The knight isn't doing anything useful and controls half the amount of squares it did a move ago. Instead of turning the knight into a bad piece for a one-move attack, what should Black have done instead? Notice all of White's minor pieces are developed, controlling important central squares, and are working together. Black's bishop on c8, however, is undeveloped and doing nothing. How can Black activate the bishop and turn it into a good piece? A strong move for black is b5. Gaining a tempo by attacking the white bishop, grabbing queenside space, and opening the b7 square for black's light squared bishop. After bishop to a2, and bishop to b7, black's bishop enters the long diagonal, h1 to a8, where it will be a powerful piece, and it also connects black's rooks. Black's position is much better now that the light squared bishop has been made a good piece. Let's take a look at one more position together. In this position, can you tell which pieces are good and which pieces are bad for both sides? Both sides have good light squared bishops. Black's bishop on d7 controls two open diagonals, a4 to e8 and h3 to c8. White's light squared bishop is also actively placed, and it targets the weak b7 pawn. White's dark squared bishop, on the other hand, protects two pawns, but it is also passive, as it is blocked by those pawns. Notice Black's knight is a very bad piece, as it is stuck on the back rank and only has two available squares to move, c6 and e6. With white to move, can you see how white can completely paralyze black's knight on d8 and make the dark squared bishop a good piece? That's right, with d5. Although white's light squared bishop is now blocked by the d5 pawn for the moment, white opens up the dark squared bishop, threatening to win the knight with bishop to f6. The only way to not lose the knight is by moving the pawn on f7 to give the knight an escape square. After f5, white 
wins the pawn with g takes f6. White now has two passed pawns on f6 and d5 and is ready to activate white's light squared bishop with d6. White's active and powerful bishops, as well as the extra material, should be enough to win the game. Now that you've learned the importance of making your pieces good and taking advantage of bad pieces, it's time to test your skills.